What's going on YouTube? What's up Raider Nation? I'm Bubba the Raider coming at you tonight. It is Saturday the night before we take on the Kansas City Chiefs tomorrow uh, on Sunday Night Football. Rocking my brand new Darren Waller jersey I got for my 31st birthday. My wife got me. Uh, had to replace my Henry Ruggs. Uh, we'll talk about that. So I just want to come here and tell you guys, talk to you guys about uh, my thoughts on the season thus far. I know it's been a minute since I've made a video and I haven't I haven't talked about some of the stuff. and Some of it I wanted to kind of digest. Um, and so I guess I'll, I'll discuss my thoughts on some of this <clears throat> right now, as well as talk about tomorrow's game, which is uh, one of the most crucial games up to this point of the season, if not the most crucial game uh, so far in the year. So, um, started off hot. We started off, you know, what, 3-0. and um, We're sitting at 5-3 uh, and three right now. Um, a tie to top the division. I guess uh, the Chargers have the tiebreaker because they beat us right now. But, um, I mean, it's we're halfway through the season just about. And so... It doesn't really like, I mean, it matters, but it's it's not the end all be all at the moment. Um, you know, the last couple years we've started off really hot and then struggled to 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 maintain. Right? We know last year started off fire hot, beat the Chiefs in Kansas City. Uh, I think we were what were we like six and two at one point. And then we got absolutely blown out by the Falcons and barely beat the Jets and just just completely tanked. And so we have to we have to work to avoid that. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we started hot. We started hot. Sorry, hold on. We started hot and then uh, you know we've hit a couple speed bumps and that's to be expected with any team. Um, Raider fans, we have a tendency to really kind of think the world is ending. Um, and sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. And so, you know, we're in a good spot. Now, we've, we've, we've dealt with more than I think any other team has that I can remember ever in the history of sports, maybe. <laughs> um, we started with John Gruden, right? We let, we, we lost our coach, um... And I'm not sure how I feel about it. You know, uh, being totally transparent as a kid, all I wanted from the time I was 12 years old was John Gruden to be back with the Raiders. And so when he came back with the Raiders, I was really, really excited about it. Um, I'm also um, someone who doesn't believe in using the type of language that he was he was using. Um, I'm half black, and so I took offense um, on some level to what he said. Um, I'm completely open-minded, and, and that also made me take some offense to what he said. I also believe that we spend way too much time <laughs> offended. Um, and so ultimately, I, I think he had to go and the reason I think he had to go, and, and it's okay if you disagree, right? Um, we can do that here. <laughs> but uh, ultimately why I think he had to go is I think that he didn't handle it um, well. I don't think that the team handled it well either. Um, you know, I don't know how much has been said about this, but I know after that, um, that, ch that Chargers loss, I think it was the Chargers loss or was it the Chicago? No, it was the Chargers loss. And then he was fired, I believe. They they had uh, announced, like right before that game, that or maybe it was the Chicago loss, that um, that there were some emails, right, and that the Raiders had received those emails Friday uh, or Thursday, come to find out. And in a, in a post press conference, post game press conference, they asked John Gruden about it, and he said, you know, it was just one email taken out of context which wasn't truthful, you know, there were multiple emails that was more than just, um, the, uh, the DeMoris Smith comments. And so I think had he maybe gotten ahead of it, had he maybe addressed it, I'm not, I don't know, cause I'm not in the locker room, but had he addressed it, had he said, Hey, 
you know. Uh, I used to think this way, I used to talk this way. I've been working in an NFL locker room. I was upset. Um, I've been working and, and being around more diverse people. And uh, I said some things, and you're going to hear some things that I've said, and I don't have, hold those beliefs anymore, and I'm sorry if I've hurt anybody in this process, and I have just changed. I think had he got out and ahead of it like that, um, he probably would still have a job. But instead it was, uh, you know, it was one email. It was taken out of context, which maybe it was, you know, and I don't believe that they should open up everyone's email. I think there should be some level of privacy. Now, what I do believe is that there is a much bigger story here. Um, and I do believe that the NFL is covering up um, some stuff. And I do hope that if this lawsuit that he is filing against the NFL, if anything comes of it, I hope it is that it sheds light on some of the other things that are being covered up right now. I know that the Washington organization has been accused of some horridly disgusting things. Um, and the victims of those things deserve the truth to come to light. And, uh, you know, John Gruden said some awful things. Pardon my dog in the back. She's adorable, I know. Um, but he said them to people. And I doubt that those people were like, hey, man, we don't talk that way. You know, he felt comfortable enough saying it to them. So the idea that of the whatever 65,000 emails, that those were the only ones that contained anything notable uh, doesn't seem right to me. But that's just kind of my thoughts. Um, I'm conflicted and uh, I'm hurt and... Uh, I don't know. It was. It's kind of hard for me to wrap my head around, uh, to be honest. But that's kind of what I, what I think um, about John Gruden. But then Rich Basacci has stepped in, and he has been really good. I've really enjoyed having him as a coach. I think he's handled things the right way. I, I, I hope that we keep him because if we keep him, that means that we've had success under him, right? Um, my thought initially was that if we we hired Rich Basacci as the interim. The idea would be that we would find someone uh, in the off season, no matter what happens. And I don't maintain that stance anymore. I think that he's he's doing a good job, and that if this continues, minus what we saw on Sunday, um, that he'll be the, he'll be the guy. Um, so then <laughs> there was all that, which was kind of like kind of sad, kind of heartbreaking. And then we had the Henry Ruggs situation, which was devastating. Um, Henry Ruggs was one of my favorite play young players coming in. Um, I was really excited about him. And none of that matters because this is a much bigger thing. I, When I read the news, the first thing I did, I did not think about the Raiders. I did not think about football. I texted my cousin who lives in Vegas to make sure he was okay. And that the family was okay. And it made me realize that there is just, there are bigger things than football. And a young woman lost her life. And I am of the viewpoint that Henry Ruggs needs love, like Derek Carr said. He needs people in his corner. He needs to reflect. He needs to grow. He needs to not feel sorry for himself but feel, oh, sorry, feel remorse for his actions. He needs to, to learn and to grow. I don't believe that Henry Ruggs should play in the NFL again. I don't believe that Henry Ruggs should have the platform and the money. Um, I think it's disgusting how people try to shift the blame every which way but where it lies and that is on Henry Ruggs he made the decision he had every opportunity I've heard people blame the victim I've heard people blame the Raiders I've heard people blame the bartender I've heard people blame Henry Ruggs girlfriend Henry Ruggs drank Henry Ruggs drove 156 miles an hour that's it that's it there's that it that's it
That's it. So, you know, that chapter's closed, and it should be closed, and it should remain closed. Um, and I hope he gets the help that he needs, and I hope he he finds a way to make amends and finds a way to live the rest of his life um, with his daughter. And I just don't think football is in the cards for him anymore. Not my decision, but that's my where my views on it. And then, on a lighter note, we lost uh, Damon Arnett shortly after. Uh, good riddance. Uh, the guy, uh, his situation was a little bit different. He, you know, he was threatening um, someone on Instagram with guns. I think that. I think that that Mayock was looking for an out to get rid of him, to get rid of his contract, and he gave him that. I really do. I know that Mayock talked about all the work he did and, and whatever, and I almost feel like that's lip service. I feel like Damon Arnett was a liability when he got on the field. I feel like Damon Arnett was a liability in the locker room, and we let him go. Good riddance. We're going to have to draft another corner, I think, because Casey Hayward is balling out, but he's old. Um, Nate Hobbs has been phenomenal. Um, Amik Robertson's been pretty good, but then he kind of looked not so great the other day. Um, and he's I think he might be out for this game where he's he's questionable. <clears throat> we'll see. Um, so th those are like the major like I don't know of another team that's ever had to go through all of these things in such quick succession. Uh, I maintain that if Derek Carr continues his play, minus what we saw last week against the Giants, um, and we make a playoff push, there's no way he shouldn't be the MVP. And that if we manage to make a deep playoff run and or a Super Bowl run, we need to be, there needs to be a movie made because this has been insane. This has been an insane year. It's almost like draining. Um and in the midst of all this craziness, we've played some really freaking good football. Like some really good football. Um, we have three losses. Two of those losses, we decided not to play football for the first half and then made it a game at the end. Had we played football throughout the entirety, you know, it's shooting ourselves in the foot. That's what we do. That's what we've done in past years. We have to stop doing that. Same with last week, you know, I'm an adamant Derek Carr supporter and lover. Like I, I, he's my favorite player in the NFL. He's my quarterback. I think I have a higher opinion on him than most. Last week was on him. Last week he played, he was off. He didn't play well. Um, not every loss is on him. I don't put the Chargers loss or the Bears loss on him. I put this one on him though. He played off. He was off and he owned it. Right. Um, couldn't score touchdowns. We couldn't get in the end zone. I also think if you take a look, um, that's what I have pulled up here on my computer. One thing that I've noticed is that in none of our losses are we getting blown out, but we stop running the football, right? Our losses have, minus the, the Chicago loss, um, our lowest amounts of attempts of rushing attempts. Uh, it's not it's not a ton, but it's it's enough. And when you stop running the ball, defenses start playing back. And what we saw last week is when defenses start playing back, playing the pass, and you don't have a guy like Henry Ruggs to keep them honest with his speed, which we brought into Sean Jackson. Hopefully, he can fill that void. They're gonna start making breaks on the ball. They're gonna start reading. Um, they're going to start being more comfortable, and that, we saw that. You know, we saw a pick six uh, and another interception. We we saw it. So we got to keep running the ball. We got we. You have to be balanced. You have to be balanced. Um, and so that's going to be so crucial tomorrow against the Chiefs. Um. But I maintain, got to continue to run the ball. We've had some players who have looked excellent. Um, Alex Leatherwood looked like crap. 
I really wanted us to move him inside the guard. We did. He's looked a lot better. Um, right tackle is a position that will need to be addressed or else move him back out there. But, you know, I I said he's had a he's had a tough assignment. He's had some tough assignments with Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack and they're just they've they've been tough. And uh it that's probably why there's been so many penalties. He's just it's a it's a tough position to play. Um so tomorrow, tomorrow is a key game. The most, there are, I'm going to say two, but I'm actually going to list five. Most important players tomorrow. Just absolutely, if we win, it will most likely be because of these five players. Max Crosby. Yannick, excuse me, I got the hiccups. Yannick Ngakwe. Quentin Jefferson, uh, Jonathan Hankins, Solomon Thomas. Our defensive line, uh, Carl Nassib, who's balling. Our defensive line has got to be relentless tomorrow. Mahomes has been having an off year. <laughs> that means nothing. That means absolutely nothing. The explosiveness on that offense, his ability as a passer, you just cannot sleep on it forever until until he retires. You just won't be able to do to sleep on it. What you can bank on is that if you can pressure him without blitzing, he will make mistakes. He will struggle. If you can get to him without blitzing, keeping your linebackers back, keeping everyone in coverage, and your defensive line doing what we've done all season long, if they can make that happen, this game will be ours. That's it. Like, point blank. If they can make that happen, it's over. That's a big if, though. You got to you gotta respect what the Chiefs can do. Their, their defense has been, from all accounts, historically bad. Um... And we should be able to score. I don't want a shootout. It always is a shootout, and I don't want a shootout. I want Max Crosby to get five sacks tomorrow on Mahomes. I want Yannick Ngakwe to just be everywhere. I want pressure up the middle. I just want relentless pass rush from those guys. I promise you, I promise you Nate Hobbs or... Casey Hayward or Trayvon Merrig or one of those guys will end up coming away with a takeaway or two as long as we can be in his face all game long. Um, and so that's pretty much it. I, I don't have super, super much more wise wisdom than that's the most important part is going to be our defensive line. It's nothing secret. It's nothing new. Um, if you can get to Mahomes, you watched the the Buccaneers do it in the Super Bowl. If you can get to him while keeping people in coverage, you can beat him. Um, so that's what I hope we do. Anyway, that's kind of my thoughts on the season moving forward. We have a pretty favorable schedule. Uh, we got, you know, the Chiefs, which will be tough. The Bengals, which they looked really good, and then they've kind of fallen off. We've got the Cowboys, who are tough. We've got Washington, who we should be able to handle. We've got Kansas City again. We've got Cleveland, who should probably be tough. Denver, who we should be able to handle. Indianapolis, we should be able to handle this year. And the Chargers, which will be tough. Um, if we can win the games we're supposed to win and, and, and win our division games, we we there's no reason we can't do everything that we want to do. Um, if I, I said to somebody, if Henry Ruggs, losing Henry Ruggs was enough to make us not a playoff team, then we weren't a playoff team to begin with. Okay, we got we got to get past that mindset that losing that player is enough to keep us out because if one player like that can keep you out of the playoffs, then you're not a playoff team. It's a playoff person. Um, and, and I have all the faith in the world and in Zay Jones and Brian Edwards and Hunter Renfro and Dylan Stoner and Deshaun Jackson. I really do. And Darren Waller and Foster Moreau. I really do. Um, 
I think we have the best quarterback in the NFL. Um, I think that there's not another quarterback who's had to deal with what he's had to deal with and has continued to show the consistency and the talent that he has shown the whole time and the leadership ability. Love it, hate it, whatever. Um, that's what I think. So those are my thoughts. Uh, let me know what you think. Leave a like on this video if you like it. Leave a dislike if you dislike it. Go to the comments and tell me why either way. Um, let's go kick the... Uh, tomorrow's my dad's birthday. He's a diehard Chiefs fan. Um, and so I'm going to go over there tomorrow and hopefully hopefully we give him a, a, a pretty sad birthday. Uh, that's what I hope for. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, just win, baby.